Hello, and yes, the internet is abuzz with the fact that Anthropic dropped a new model. Sonnet 4 is... No, not Sonnet 4. Sonnet 3.5 version 2 is here, and it shows some improvements over Sonnet 3.5, and everyone's kind of excited, fine, um, because of the thing that it does in beta. Um, so it does this new thing, or it's been fine-tuned to work with computer control. So it's designed to to look at the output from a screen, from the screen capture of a computer, and then see what's happening inside of that, and then issue commands, tool use commands, to go and interact with it. So move the mouse, click the mouse, type something in, and control the computer. Now they've got some sample code, which is great, um, which uh, I think it has a container in there and you can spin up a, like a Docker container. It's got like a, an Ubuntu image or something like that. And they've got warnings everywhere saying, don't do this on a machine which has access to important stuff. So keep it sandboxed. Um, but I didn't really want to do that. So I've had a go with making it control my computer that I'm actually using to develop the code to control my computer. And Okay, basically it works. Um, let me show you what I've got. So um, I've been playing around with this code. I'm in bedrock um, mode here. So I'm using bedrock to call the Claude um, 3.5 model here. So it's the version two. So I've enabled it inside of my console and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so I've got that. And I basically built up a, 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 a normal agentic workflow here. So um, I've got a system prompt in here. You're a helpful assistant. Um, you can use tools to perform actions on my computer. Um, my computer is a Mac OS machine. I found it useful to tell it that because it didn't do things like double click icons. It was single clicking icons and stuff like that. Um, I've put some extra stuff in there as well, just to help it along. The, the new thing is the tools definition. So this tools definition um, is tools that are sort of built into the actual model itself, or it's certainly into the inference platform for the model. So it knows about this computer 2024, 10, 22, um, type and so it knows what to do with that and that's what I've been playing around with I actually haven't played around with the bash or the text editor I have included it here but I've never included any commands that would ask it to do that and I actually haven't hooked that up yet so this is all very much um, what I've been hacking around with today um, so then um, we've got uh, the anthropic payload that I put together so this again has this anthropic beta in here so it's actually showing it that this is something not production ready yet. Other than that's pretty um, similar to before um, with messages going in, all that kind of stuff. And we're just going to send that into invoke model. So we're not going to use the converse API here. We're going to use invoke model. So we're passing data directly into the anthropic cloud model. So that's what we get. I then have this uh, process response um, uh, function here, which is going to take the output and it's going to look to see what we need to do with it. Um, and it's going to look specifically to see if there's any tool use to be used here. So it goes and has a look at the tool use and if it finds that it's the computer tool, which is the only one I support at the moment, um, it, it's got the ability to do various things. Take a screenshot, um, press a key, um, to type something in, to move the mouse, to left click, to right click, to middle click. Some of that's not working perfectly at the moment, but um, it's all in there. Um, I've got this other class here called computer and I found a couple of different libraries that I can use to use Python to control my machine. So um, one of them is uh, PinePut, PinePut, P-Y-N-P-U-T, um, and the other one is uh, P-Y-Auto-G-U-I. Um, so I found the various different libraries for different things. So definitely taking screenshots and all that kind of stuff with PyAuto GUI. Um, doing things like mouse movements and key presses seem to be more reliable with the PYN put, Pine put. Um, especially double clicking, for some reason just wasn't working at all with the PYAuto GUI. Anyway, so basic tools um, and they do the job and pass the response back to the model um, so it passes it back as a user input and says, okay, I've done the tool use and this is what I've got. Took a little bit of digging around to find some of the uh, formats for how to do that. So for example, sending the screenshot back, we send back in this image and we send it in as a base64 encoded. So it's, it's, it's basically the same actually as if we were just taking a screenshot, uh, as if we were just passing in the image normally, I guess. But um, anyway, 
yeah, that's how you do that. So um, with all of that, um, I get to set. Yeah, see, I, I haven't got other things done yet. This is all to do. Um, but I get to pass in my prompt. And this is the prompt that I passed in. So I'm going to pass in Rick, roll me, smiley face, um, and just run this. Now, before I press run on this, I'm going to press this button over here, which is going to, um, oh, there we go. Bring that down there so you can still see it. This is overlaid on top another one of my monitors. This is actually a monitor that I have on my desk here. It's, it's actually quite small. I'm trying to keep it small so that um, the uh, so I don't blow out the context window. Um, but if I move my mouse up here, look, this is this is a live window. This is actually connected to my computer. All right, so let's go and press run on this code, um, and then maybe I should get rid of me, and we'll see what happens. But you can see the code running at the side there, and um, I'm leaving the mouse alone. So hopefully um, we'll see things happen. So the mouse has moved over to my other screen and um, it's double clicked. Again, I'm not doing anything here. If I could show you my hands, they're not doing anything. Um, it's uh, reasoning through some steps here. So what's it going to do? It's it's actually um, right. So it's left clicked inside of the search bar. It's typing in a URL because it knows what the URL is for a Rickroll. And it's got to that page, which is great. And let's see what happens next. It's going to click on the video and then again, what's going to happen is yeah, it should click on this and it should be done. I imagine you probably couldn't hear me over the top of that. So there you go. So um, very, very complicated way to Rickroll myself. But um, essentially, it's showing that the model has gone through all of these um, steps. Let me get rid of that so you can see a little bit better um, some of the some of the things it's gone through. Um, so yeah, it, it, it steps through, it takes screenshots, it moves the mouse, and then ultimately says, there you go, you've been Rickrolled. Um, I hope you thought this was useful. I don't know how useful it really was, but it's interesting to get using this new model um, and seeing how it works. Now, obviously, under the hood here, what's happened is that I guess the model's been fine tuned on a data set which understands about the positioning of places. So it's that movement of the mouse, particularly to a particular um, pinpoint location on the screen. That's a little bit different from the kind of thing we've been able to do before. We've been able to pass in screenshots and have Claude describe what's happening there, but not be specific about where to move the mouse and what to do. Um, and so clearly there's lots of things you could do with this. Um, automation of tasks that don't actually themselves have an API. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how you can make this work more. There is sample code, like I suggest, said before, um, which I can link to beneath this video. And that's probably the safer way to do it because you'll be opening up a Docker container um, and running things inside of that Docker container. But there you go. If you're wondering if you get to control your own computer, then yes, you can. Should you do it? Absolutely not. Don't do this. Um, but um, yeah, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the video even more than that, subscribe to this channel because this is the kind of thing I do. And until the next time, I'll see you later.